So I'll be presenting my paper, Optimal Sensor Scheduling in Energy Harvesting Aided Cognitive Radio Networks. So in this presentation, I'll be touching the following topics. I'll, be, I'll discuss the network model focusing on the SSR approach. Then I'll be discussing the sensor to channel assignment matrix and form an optimization problem and then solve that optimization problem using the cross entropy algorithm. In the simulation results, I'll highlight the ROC we obtained using RTL-HDR and then compare the throughput for conventional cooperative sensing and the SSR approach. Finally, I will conclude with the conclusion. So cognitive radio is a network technology which senses a channel, detects activity on that channel and initiates data transmission. So the goal is to determine if the channel is being used or not and then maximize the data which is transferred. In cooperative sensing, there are multiple sensors. Each of these sensors send, uh, form an individual decision and this decision, these decisions are then combined using OR rule, N rule, K out of M rule. In our paper, we use the SSR, which is superior selective reporting approach. This is because it reduces the overhead and increases the network throughput. Our sensors are also capable of energy harvesting to meet the energy constraints. Uh, in this network model, we can see in the figure on the left, there are a couple of PUs. PUs are the primary users. They have the license to send the data on the channels. Then we have the spectrum sensors. So the job of the spectrum sensors is to sense the channels. We have n number of spectrum sensors and they are capable of energy harvesting. Each of these spectrum sensors sends their, send their data to uh, what we call fusion center. It is at this point that the OR rule, N rule or K out of M rule is applied. In the figure on the right, we can see the frame structure. So basically it consists of your sensing time, <coughs> your reporting time, and then the rest of the time is the time you have to transmit the data. So what used to happen in the conventional uh, cooperative sensing is that each sensor used to report its decision one at a time. So this used to increase the reporting time a lot and consequently less time was available for data transmission. But what happens in SSR is among the, S among the sensors which sense the PU on the channel, only the best one is selected to report the data. As a result, this time is reduced and more time is available for, to transfer the data. Now, now we have, since we are talking about multiple channels, we have L number of channels and we have N number of uh, spectrum sensors. So our job now is to form the sensor to channel assignment matrix. So in getting this matrix, the main goal is to maximize the overall throughput and at the same time keeping in mind the uh, energy constraints. So in this equation, we can see the energy which one, S one spectrum sensor will use. So it, con it consists of all the sensing energy and on the right hand side we see the energy it can harvest. This is the energy harvesting rate multiplied by the total frame time. So the constraint is such that the sensing energy should be less than the energy harvested. So this, this uh, equation is then simplified by uh, putting a penalty. So in this figure, in this uh, equation we can see the matrix I which is which is one whenever the constraint is violated and zero whenever it is not. So one way of going about this would be just to uh, exploit all the possible combinations of ones and zeros in this matrix, but this is very time intensive and, comp and requires a lot of computing. So to solve this problem, we use cross entropy algorithm. Uh, this I'll discuss about cross entropy in the results. Now, once we get our required matrix, we need to calculate the throughput. So basically there are four cases. One, when your, P, uh, when your PU is actually present and it is not falsely detected, this is the case we get maximum throughput. Second, when your PU is present and it is correctly detected, this is the case when you would not, you will not transfer your data. So your throughput is zero. The third is the case when your PU is absent and it is falsely detected. This is, uh, in this case, even though your PU is not, even though your channel is not being used, you're not sending data. So we impose a penalty. And lastly, the case when your PU is present and it is not detected. So it is being used and you transfer your data. So 
in this case you still get your throughput but it's multiplied by a coefficient now what i want to highlight in this table is on the uh, left hand side we have the conventional approach and right hand side we have the ssr so in this equation you can see that your reporting time is multiplied by the number of sensors which are reporting that is n for that particular channel but on the right hand side the this term is just one there's it's so you have more time available for data transmission whereas in this case you have less okay so in the results so firstly we need to determine the roc which is receiver operating characteristics of the sensor so it is pd versus pf we determine this by first sending using uh, sending an fm signal through a phone and then with the rtl sdr we captured it on our laptops then uh, after computing it in matlab we got the roc this was later used in to calculate the pd and pf and then the global probability of detection and the global probability of false detection which is used in the calculation of throughput in this figure the first figure is about the uh, uh, cross entropy algorithm so this is the uh, throughput versus the iteration so we can see that as the assignment matrix is been formed the throughput keeps improving the one in the pink is the ssr which is above the rest uh, that those are the k out of m rule or rule and end rule so we discuss now we discuss k out of m rule and s and the ssr with respect to the number of sensors which are used so we can see that initially when the number of sensors are less the k out of m rule outperforms ssr but as we keep increasing the number of sensors eventually ssr is above in terms of throughput this is because uh, a lot of the channel available time is used up by reporting so i would like to conclude saying that in this paper we focus on the trade off between the ssr and the conventional cooperative schemes although k out of m rule is performs way better in terms of detection accuracy in in terms of the overall throughput it's not able to compete whenever the number of sensors increases and in those cases we should switch to ssr let's thank the speaker for his open